Now we're going to transition over to fascial spaces. Uh, there are three spaces uh, that can form with, between the deep fascial uh, layers. We're going to be able to see uh, two of these uh, areas very, very well. And uh, the third, unfortunately, is not well illustrated uh, in the image, but we'll make note of the fact that it does exist. First, we have the pretracheal space. The pretracheal space is shown anterior to the visceral compartment and thus lies anterior to the trachea in this particular uh, view. A second space is shown right in through here. This is referred to as the retropharyngeal uh, space. And then it lies between the uh, visceral compartment and its sheath and the vertebral compartment in its deep fascial uh, layer. Uh, the third uh, space is the pre-vertebral space. Uh, that space would be the deep fascial uh, layer that exists over the anterior portion of the body of related vertebra and the anterior part of its transverse uh, process. Uh, this is a bilaminar uh, area, so there's a space uh, between it. Unfortunately, it is not well uh, illustrated in this particular uh, image, but it is one to keep in mind. Why are these fascial spaces important? Well, one area of clinical correlation or relevance here is that infections, and we'll use the pretracheal space right in through here, if there's an infection in this area, it may extend inferiorly and uh, reach the anterior mediastinum. A second clinical consideration is if invasion occurs, that is, invasion of a cancer, the cancer can spread into any one of these three potential fascial uh, spaces. A third and final consideration here is with respect to the retropharyngeal space. This space right in through here, if there's an infection here, this can spread inferiorly and infect the posterior mediastinum, and that could then form an abscess in this particular retropharyngeal space as a result. Our next uh, area to take a look at is surgical access uh, to the trachea. Uh, this may be necessitated when one cannot uh, intubate and you need to uh, provide uh, ventilation uh, to an unconscious uh, patient or even a conscious patient. Several approaches. Uh, one is a coneotomy. A coneotomy goes by two uh, alternate names, a cricothyrotomy. This can also be referred to simply uh, as a crike. Another approach is to perform an upper uh, tracheotomy, uh, which would be in this uh, region here. And then the third approach would be to do a lower uh, tracheotomy, shown in this region here. We will now explore uh, each one of these um, with the approach taken. Here, we'll uh, begin with the coneotomy, or simply the crike. The relevant anatomy is the area between the inferior portion of the thyroid cartilage of the larynx that we see here. This laryngeal cartilage that we see inferior to the thyroid cartilage is the cricoid cartilage, and we'd be right up here along uh, its superior border, running then between these two laryngeal uh, cartilaginous structures is the cricothyroid uh, membrane. Uh, one would get to this level surgically, and then the, a horizontal incision would be performed. And then the, the patient could be uh, ventilated. This area here in a coneotomy is immediately inferior uh, to the vocal cords or folds. The uh, other approach is the tracheotomy, and there's an upper one and a lower one. Let's take a look at the upper tracheotomy uh, first. 
Uh, this is a vertical incision, and it is going to run in this area of the anatomy between the inferior aspect of the cricoid cartilage here and then the isthmus of your thyroid gland uh, below. And then that will provide surgical access uh, to the trachea in this space. The lower tracheotomy is going to be inferior to the isthmus of the thyroid gland, and you can see the vertical incision of that approach right in through here. 